I have always said it was a killing that wasn't expected. He was a bad person in a lot of ways. He tortured and, and uh, terrorized. The town vanishes. All those people watching this happen, not one of them came forward and said, I saw who did it. This story is one of America's most infamous and notorious cases ever. Still in this small town of Skidmore, Missouri, lies a dirty old secret. Born in 1939, Ken McElroy was a resident of Skidmore, Missouri. The town had a population of 437 residents. He was one of 16 children born to an impoverished farming family. By the 8th grade, Ken was illiterate and decided to drop out of high school. As an adult, Ken transformed to be a giant of a man. And he was a tall man, weighing 270 pounds, which added to his intimidating nature. Ken fathered more than 10 children with different women. He burned down his wife Trina's home and shot the family dog before her parents relented but ultimately agreed to their marriage. In July of 1976, Ken pulled a gun on former Raymond Henry and shot the man in the stomach shot him and says x-rays show his stomach still has the buckshot in it from the incident more than a decade ago. Henry survived and Cam was charged with assault when intent to kill. However, when the matter came to trial, Cam's attorney produced a pair of witnesses who testified that they were hunting with Cam the day of the shooting and he was nowhere near the scene. Cam was found not guilty. In another incident in 1980, one of Ken's daughters was in the store owned by the Bowen Camp family. Ernest Bowen Camp saw the little girl with a candy bar and asked her to put it back since she hadn't paid for it. Ken was apparently so angry by this event, he began to set all the terroristic energy on the Bowen Camp family. He would follow them around town, sit outside their store in his truck, and sometimes fire his gun in the air to scare them. Ken eventually threatened both Bowen Camp in the back of his store with a shotgun in his hand. In the confrontation, Ken shot Bo in the neck, but Bo survived, and Ken was arrested and charged with attempted murder. Ken was convicted of the assault, but let out of jail, awaiting appeal. He went around making public threats to the family around town, while armed with a rifle. His lawyer, Richard McFadden, was extremely good at getting Ken out of trouble, which was no small accomplishment. Ken was in court approximately three times a year, according to Richard. Granted, Richard was always a specialist at keeping members of the mob out of jail, so he had plenty of practice. Richard wasn't the only one ensuring Ken didn't go to prison. Ken himself was known for intimidating witnesses by stalking them until they refused to testify. Several townspeople met with the Nordaway County Sheriff at a local hall to discuss what can be done about Ken. Also, meanwhile, Ken learned the names of the three witnesses scheduled to testify at his upcoming bond revocation hearing. They were prepared to say Ken had walked into the local bar carrying a loaded weapon. The night before the hearing, Ken's attorney landed a two-week continuance. That's when the town lost it. The town had about 40 or 50 people who were going to protect the three witnesses if anything escalated and escort them to the courts. Over time, they conspired to kill Ken. Allegedly, even the mayor was in on it. It said that the town heard the news that Ken was down the street at the bar. And this is why the meeting adjourned and attendees headed there. Participants in the meeting were in and around the bar. And not long after, Ken got into his truck with his wife, Trina. As Ken said in his truck, he was shot at several times. He was hit twice in the head and died in his truck. As his body relaxed from the trauma of the gunshots, his foot was left roaring on the gas pedal until the engine blew. A headshot blood stain was gliding down the front rear. But even after all that, no one called the ambulance. Trina was the only survivor in the car. Of the potential 40 or so witnesses, with the exception of Trina. No one can name a shooter. Everyone claimed they didn't see who fired the shots. The DA declined to press charges 
and the following investigation proved to be futile, as there was no witnesses and nobody was able to take the stand. Ken was buried at Memorial Park Cemetery in St. Joseph, Missouri. On July 9th, 1984, Trina filed a $5 million wrongful death lawsuit against the town of Skidmore, the county of Norway, and the sheriff. The case was later settled out of court by all parties for $17,000, with no one admitting guilt to the crime. Trina remarried and moved to Labadon, Missouri, where she died of cancer on her 55th birthday on January 24, 2012. I think due to the sheer amount of witnesses to this murder, and no one told, this has to be the craziest cold case there ever was. <laughs>